So we finally got the approval for this. We're gonna go ahead and start tearing it down um, and we'll see what happens. But let's tear into it real quick. See how long this takes to get it apart. Now I'm probably gonna just do a time lapse. It'll be a little bit easier. Yeah, try to get the bass air plug off. Don't break it. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these clothes are tight sometimes. Try to grab the plug on the wires. There's that. There's this. Sure. Okay, you can see what I'm doing. You go, stud. <laughs> Almost done. And that's a 10. <laughs> it's in the shroud, which is. It's weird. It gets the job done, I guess. Careful of this fan. It's my only fan. Okay. Bad joke. Put this under my tube cover. Get this out of the way. Get this belt off. Compressor. I already drained the refrigerant out of it. I covered it with the machine. Two it's empty too. So we're pretty much clear to tear into her. And throw everything over there. Then enough of these. I have to cover these lines up. Put plugs in the compressor so it don't get crap in the compressor. Any quick contamination. This up. We're taking that line out anyways. This one over here is going to stay because uh, this goes to the condenser, not messing with the condenser. Got to fold it around, hopefully it doesn't rupture. And I put it back together, but it's got cracks in it already. So it's probably going to explode when I go to recharge it. It's getting really calm in here. So these lines explode now and they get old like that and you twist them get them out of the way the compressor make sure you set this down flat so that you don't spill the oil out you don't want to lose the oil
Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Now we can pass in. Oh, no, thank you. Right. How are you going to get like this? Right. Oh, yeah? Where at? RV Elite. Really? Same one? Exactly the same. Five hundred bucks. Does it fit? 1271. That's the one I found, too. RV Elite? I think so. Because all I did was punch in 2004 Holiday Rambler airbag. Or air spring replacement. Yeah, that's what I found. I'm like 500 bucks a bag, but Good, well, you gotta do it. Well, he doesn't care. I, I just actually talked to him. Yeah. Yeah, he said he's canceling his trip. He said he's got too much going on right now. He said he's gonna. His son's having a game, and he's just like, I'd rather be here, and not. I don't want to rush. He said, I don't want to rush you. <coughs> When's his trip? Uh, it was supposed to be, I think, the 16th. Oh. Uh, well, you might be able to get it done by then. Yeah. I, can we call them and verify that is the correct one? Yeah, exactly. it, it does look exactly the same. I, I have a screenshot on my phone. Yeah, it does look exactly the same. Because you can't, I seriously, that's the only place I found that actually looks similar. Yeah, and it says it fits Holiday Rambler. Yeah, but they don't, I don't think they go by application. It says Holiday Rambler, Monaco. Cool. It looks the same. I'm going to call them and just. Yeah, double check. Because I don't want to order them. Order $1,000 in their bag and have me wrong. He wants to do both? Yeah. Oh, I totally want them both. It's like a tea. on these what I do is I leave the, the actual uh, the bolts in them because on the front there are a couple different size bolts so I usually leave the bolts and just set the bracket down in the cart like that. Just makes it easier to reassemble this thing. So we've got that side done. Um, now we can start on this side. Now we're going to deal with the FSM. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, the zip tie I put on, I'm gonna break that off. I'm gonna undo the. Okay, I'll move you guys. Bring it over here so you can see a little bit better. Might be working in your area, but that one. Let's get this one out. Okay. That. And then the harness will lay it over the entire engine when we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and undo the alternator. I'm gonna try to take this whole thing off as one entire bracket. Makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna need a 10 wrench and uh, I mean a 17, 17 for that. Um, while I'm here, we should actually start blowing stuff off. So let me go grab my blower and 17 and a 10 wrench.
batteries are unhooked. Hey. Oh, won't slide. Yeah. I can put the nut back on while it matters. Makes them easier to do next time. Okay, now let's undo these fuel lines. They're 17. Just gonna let them. It's gonna leak a little bit of fuel. Let's let it drip down for a minute. Let me get it apart. The banjo bolts in there. Pull this out. Take both banjo bolts out. Let the fuel drip. There's that. Um, so, this is going to be a little interesting doing it this way because I'm going to try to take the whole thing out as one entire assembly. Let me. That's all I did. That's why I'm grabbing 12. Okay. I don't know why I didn't have a 12. It's a rookie mistake. Okay, now there's going to be couple things over here that we're gonna need to get um, I think to make this a little bit easier I'm gonna go ahead and pull the charge tube now because the charge tube is kind of in my way so we can undo the clamp over here I'm trying to be easy these are to the aftermarket um, charge tube boots on here which I'm not a fan of so let me go pull that out and pull it through the fender now. Didn't get it out, I just moved it around a little bit. Take it out of my way. So we can pull. I need a 13, we're gonna pull this off. I'm gonna pull the heater hose off next. So, got this. 13 nut. Over here, sometimes the 13, sometimes the 12. This one, I don't really know until we get in there. nut we were trying to get. Now that's not the only thing we're gonna have to deal with in here. Um, we're gonna have, there's also the dipstick. That's this bracket as well. That's right here. It's usually a 12. out of this. There's a nut. Another nut. I think it's two more bolts. And one. That's it. We're on three on this one. 
that off. Make sure this wiring comes off. We're not ripping it out. Okay. I'm gonna get this clip. I gotta do this, get around that harness. Taking this pull bridge off. Should be yeah, two bolts, two dots on either side. I'll take this out, give us some room. I can get them. Yeah. yeah. The real right? Okay. Where you look on Firestone's website, uh -huh. they tell you look in that little oval, uh -huh. and the oval is the part number that. Ooh. So oh. I cleaned it up, and it's a one. T15L2. Mm -hmm. Push it in the computer, uh -huh. pops right up. Really? Yep. Nice. And that one, the first one I looked at, is 300 something dollars. Fine. Is that the Firestone one? It's Firestone. Well, that that's works. That's Firestone back. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, I don't know. He was looking up the manufacturing number in the bottom. Yeah, that's the one that it, when you look it up, that's what it comes up as. <coughs> oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, they tell you to look on the side of it. Oh, cool. How do I identify it? Oh, that works. Okay, and this, I'm gonna pull this. We're gonna change this over anyway, so. this side out first and then we'll start working inside. This is the first real day of teardown so I'm hoping I can get it to um, get it to the fuel system valve covers and uh, we'll see what happens today. Just take that off. It's like so in my way. <laughs> Okay. 
I'm just taking everything out as one piece, pretty much. Because um, I'm going to be going through this thing anyways. So with me, this truck is... Um, everything that I touch gets resealed so that when I'm done with it, I don't have to think about it having issues down the road. No, I mean, the customer's actually cool. He wants to do everything. We're actually replacing, uh, being a brand new Garrett turbocharger. Because um, I'm fairly certain this truck had turbocharger codes a few months ago, six months ago, something like that. Um, and it was just with the veins getting stuck inside. It's a really common issue with these trucks when they get higher mileage. So it's a lot cheaper to change it when we have the heads off, obviously. It's a lot less labor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And um we're putting a new injection pump in it too or i should say remanufactured but it's getting getting quite a bit of goodies in here so make it reliable you know because i would hate to put this thing back together and have the turbocharger um, lock up and then have to not not like the actual turbocharger itself the the compressor wheel or something the veins lock up when i'm done and then i have to go back in and do the turbocharger and have to charge him all the labor to do it because you know it just it is what it is for the money, I'd rather just have him spend it now and be done with it and not have to worry about it. Then everybody's hurts at first, but everybody be happy. I don't have to worry about it coming back. But first we need to get the heads off, make sure that there's no cracked pistons, no surprises. And then, and then we'll go ahead and continue with that. And go ahead and get this uh, magic thing off that you can't see over there. Go ahead and get this off. The accumulator, the accumulator out, out of my way. It's just gonna be easier. I'm putting all the pretty much bolts um, in that tray. It's got a lot of dye in here. <laughs> dryer should come out, or not dryer, this is an accumulator. I can't even see what I'm doing. Covered up, so I'm gonna get no dirt in there. Okay, let's put a plug in here. I have one. I'm not the perfect size, but let me see if I have something different. There's one there. Yep, that one looks a lot better. Cool, so now. I want to get this charge tube out. Okay. Charge tube's ready to pop out. I'm going to get this hose off up here so I can get this out of my way. Try not to damage this, this brand new hose. on there pretty good so we're gonna go like so a little spray and wd-40 for you or just luck okay that's out of my way now heater hose is turning like this. I think I just replaced these a while ago, so it should be good. Now we just gotta try to get this charged out. Okay, that's good. we're gonna continue. This is day two. I had to stop yesterday because the camera overheated. Um, I have to go grab some trailer. Where are we headed? Trailer. That and get this harness off. Take that off. Like this. Mm. Uh, I am. I'm waiting for it to dry. <laughs> <laughs> 
that out. This off. Gotta be careful with this harness on this truck. Let's get this, this bracket off. I'm gonna attempt to. Yeah. This. Okay. Oh, we'll get that one later. Mm. It dropped. And I have one down here. Gotta get this off to get this upper hose out of the way. There's that. Problem is, we'll leave that alone for now. Let's get this pipe out. Because the uh, there's a barometer, a bar barrel sensor hooked to the bottom, and the the VGT position sensor is there too. Cut this uh, coolant line because I'm gonna replace it. When it goes back together, all these hoses are gonna be brand new. So, it's already got a new upper hose, a good GM one too. So that's awesome. I think I did this. I think I replaced these hoses in this radiator. I don't know when, but they look newer and they look GM. Like they're GM parts. Get this out of the way. Okay, now we're down to the barometer. Go ahead and pop this off. That. Trying to be careful. And then the VGT we're gonna have to get the VGT position sensor. I just don't wanna break anything. Um so we're gonna unhook the VGT. I'm doing this clip in the connector wrong, I'm gonna break it. There's that. We're just gonna set this up here for now. I'm gonna leave it out because those blue clips, if you try to take these out, they usually break. So we're just gonna leave that like that. Um, we'll work on the wiring. Um, so next, I think I'm gonna pull this charge tube. We're gonna get this side clear. Yeah. Pull the charge tube. Pull the glow plug control module. Um, get it to the fuel lines, and then we'll pull the fuel lines and start getting into this thing. Um, okay, let me get in 11. Let me go do the charge tube. Let's get the charge tube out of the way, and then. Okay, charge tubes out of the way. Follow that. Um, just got fuel lines to play with. Pull the glow plug control modules, two tens. One. Set that in there. These are like gold, I guess, right now. So we gotta be careful with this one. Run everybody on the line, these you can't get. It. So try to be careful with it, but these ears do break off. Race cars. Off. Um, 
through the pole. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this without getting into it too far. I want to take it off in, in as large pieces as I can. Just to get everything apart so I'm not taking everything apart it's getting off. I think what we'll do, we're gonna go next on the passenger side and start pulling this side apart. We're gonna start ripping. I mean, this side's almost pretty much done. What we can do is pull the fuel filter real quick, get the fuel filter housing off, um, and then unhook the harness and then start pulling the harness off all the way over there. And then we'll get the harness off, and then we'll tack the fuel system, and then we'll go from there. So, I'll do that. That'll be easier. So, we're going to 12, and then we get this hose clamp off, and again, these hoses, these ones are getting replaced as well. When I do these, um, they go back together with pretty much all new stuff, just so that it's perfect. I should be replacing the return lines too. This hose is just old. I'm trying to even get a bite on it. Actually. Have these new pliers. Let's see. Okay. Well, they, that worked uh, tremendously better than what I've been doing. <laughs> so there's that. But like I said, it doesn't matter. These are all getting replaced. I don't put these back together with these old rubber hoses. Not taking a bunch of stuff off top of the engine to replace them to save, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Let's use the factory ones and call it a day. Leave that one. There should be one right here. There's those three. Got this in my, my cart. Just some A. Okay, and there's that. Now we're down to the bare bottom side. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to unhook under these tens. We we'll get these out first. And just secure the wiring to the to the top of the valve cover. Got those tens. Start unhooking. Unhooking stuff. I'm gonna grab a tray and I'm gonna grab my fuel line disconnect and then I brought a tray. Set it on top of the battery. Put all the hardware for over here. Yeah, I'll send them to you. I'm gonna put them in a file. Okay. Yeah, I have a few of them. I'll send them to you. How you doing? These little glow plug nuts. We get the glow plug nuts off. Okay. You can't see what I'm doing, but and second one. There's that. Now we're gonna hook the injectors. Seven, it's starting to burn. So is number five. See a little, little rusty color in there. It's just connected to get a little hot. So we're gonna unhook the coolant level sensor on the reservoir. I'm gonna pull this harness through. Get it out of my way. Okay, we're gonna take this, take this entire harness, pull them off the glow plug studs. Gonna lay it over the front like that. Now we got one side clear. Okay. Dopey. 
now we have this side to deal with. I'm gonna set you guys right here. A better view of what's actually going on, you know? So we have this, these harnesses, like clipped in. Not in the best place either. There is the bolt. Yeah, it's not, not the best of places. Not that broke. Sell harness for that. I gotta be careful with these. Man, they make them so difficult to really get in here and get rid of them. fuel temp sensor to deal with. It's kind of tight and here comes a fire truck. Get this off. I'm going to take the bracket off. I'm flying around today. Okay. There's a 12. We got that. That yeah, loosens the whole... Yeah, I guess it loosens the whole bracket off too. fuel pressure regulator. Let's unhook it right here, leave that sub harness there. The turbochargers, oil pressure. That loom is just falling apart. It's typical of these trucks. They get old. It happens, you know? Okay. So now we're gonna have to go over here and start unhooking everything. I think I'm gonna have to pull the steering shaft. Just. Pull the steering shaft up a little bit and tie up the steering wheel to get the glow plug out. Usually, that's how it works on these early ones. Um, but yeah, probably do. I need a 10 millimeter quarter inch socket. I don't have one. Look at that. Moving on up in the world. So, where is, here's the first one. There's still three, three over here as well. Number one. You could do these with the, the wheel well, but it's easier for me to do up here. Trucks, you know, stock high. So I'd have to jack it up, and I really don't want to jack it up right now. So we're good. Now let's get the glow plugs as much as I can right now. Get everything out of the way. Should be a little bit easier. These ones are kind of a pain in the butt. I'm high up to my hand. 
One second, compared to today, I actually have tools out here with me. Those back too, I'm gonna do some fun. I will. the screwdriver and pop them through the back. Now we get number eight. Yes, this is number eight. Okay. Now I think there's a bolt back here for the harness. Okay. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna pop the few lines off. Use a quick disconnect, half inch, and then the other one, the return is three eighths. Go right there. Just give them a little wiggle jiggle. Jiggle wiggle it around, just good to go. Okay, now, pretty sure, yeah, there is a harness. See? Well, so we're gonna need to get a twelve out. I mean, these trucks are a little funky because you got 12s and 13s everywhere. Generally, the nuts are 13s, but it's, you know, not a sure thing. Kind of sucks. And this one's got the an updated weird connector on that. Use that glow plug. Got that one. Let's get the back glow plugs. Slid off the stud. Uh, and then down here, we get zip tied to the fuel return line. We're gonna have to cut that. Not the line, the zip tie. I may be crazy, but not that crazy. I, I should replace those, but I, I didn't put them on the, the order. Probably gonna have to tape up and loom this harness. This one's pretty rough. Especially like right here, if I leave it, it's just gonna shorten the injectors out. And then it'll come back and this thing will pop and so we're gonna set the harness. I just shove it all down here. You know, we don't really need to mess with anything up here right now. And then this main harness, I usually just bend it out of the way and get it out of my direct, direct working area. Put it behind the hydrogen line and and go like so, like that maybe. Just get out of the way. Fuel lines, same thing. You just put a rag over them. And then it's not ideal to bend them like that because those lines are kind of crappy. Um, but we're definitely down to the fuel system now, as you can see. I'm gonna grab all my rags and we're going to I'm gonna cover the face of the turbocharger. Actually, it doesn't even matter. This turbocharger is getting replaced, so I don't even care about that. Uh, we're gonna blow it all off again. So, just get all the rest of the crap off. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get it. I wanna get a part today so we have an idea. Okay. Now we're using the other lines. And break my hands in the process. Mm. I should probably bring you over here so you can see what I'm doing. That might be a little smart, don't you think? <laughs> Didn't eat my Wheaties this morning. Ooh, 
guns are kind of corroded. What's kind of funny on the uh, LB7, the generation before this, the Duramax, um, all those pictures you see online, oh, this is what your injector looks like. Those are all, uh, I wouldn't call them fake, but it's not the truth. That's not what the injector looks like on the inside. And I'll show you why in a second. So they have, they're kind of similar lines. They're, they're different, but they're similar design. So when you pull this line off, this these ones don't look bad, but when there, there's a collar that builds up all that trash in there, because it goes through there and builds up there. So when you pull this the collar up, all the crap falls in the injectors. And then that's what they used to say, oh, this is what your injectors look like, but they don't look like that. You know, not until you pull the line off, and then that's when all the stuff falls in there, and you know, but if this was an LB7, it would be getting new injectors. But uh, since this is not that truck, these don't have really injector issues. Um, we're not going to replace the injectors because there are no problem with those right now. So the only thing that I've ever really seen go wrong with these is the pigtails obviously burn up and if you continue driving it, it'll damage the injector. And that's, it'll damage it electronically. It'll burn the pin on the injector. And then that's when it requires replacement. But um, I think I've changed one or two injectors on an LLY, which this is an LLY. It's um, the one after the LB7 with the injectors in the valve cover. That's before the, the LBZ. But these are good engines, just the kind of dogs. And uh, obviously the head gasket issue, but that's kind of a, a Duramax thing, unfortunately. I'd like to say it's not, but it is. I wish they would figure it out. And this truck is stock. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a older gentleman that owns it, and I don't think he's out there trying to race anybody in it, so. I don't believe this thing is modified. I mean, this thing is under the hood, looks stock, and this appears to be the first time that anybody's been in here because everything's where it needs to be, all the bolts. I mean, by the time sometimes you take these apart, there's the wrong nuts, wrong bolts, stuff's missing. This thing, it looks actually quite good, you know, which is really nice because I don't like them when they come in and they're all, um, they've been messed with. Because then I have to go find bolts and nuts and washers and because I really don't like putting my stuff together, back together, uh, missing stuff. It needs to go back together like it was never taken apart. So. Let me, now we're gonna do the injector return lines. These clips are a little hairy, so they're gonna blow away. We're just gonna put them in our little tray up there. Because we'll need to put these back in the injectors when we, uh, we go to reinstall everything. I mean, you don't have to replace these lines. I, you don't, I mean, it's just, it's really up to you. Uh, a little bit, what, what do you got? Oh, I'll wait for you. Chicken wing? Chicken wing. Chicken wing? Mm -hmm. uh, but for, we actually can get Bosch ones really cheap, so. It saves the customer a bunch of money, and obviously we're not going to charge them labor to install these. Because they are plastic, they're brittle. They're not brittle, but they're plastic. They have the potential to leak, especially with me moving them around. They usually leak from the, the braided portions, or these can break. Um, for what we get them for and what we sell them for, it's, it's not really worth the headache of not replacing them. Um, to have to go back in and do fix the fuel leak, because they're a little bit of a pain in the butt to replace once everything's in place. So, might as well just pull the injectors out. Um, now the guys back east are gonna get a little mad at this, but we shouldn't have any stuck injectors. That's the one good thing about living in California, and that's it. No rust. I'm still being careful with them. Okay, and then when you take these out, don't don't forget to make sure you don't lose the piece underneath. These ones are already loose. They're just gonna pop right out. And these injectors are not coated on this truck. You can pull any of them out, put them anywhere. It doesn't matter. It won't hurt them. So, you don't have to worry about that. Come out like butter. Just make sure this pin, you don't lose this pin. 
Put that in there. See, don't drop it. I'm just setting these injectors in my tray. Another little trick you can do to make it easier to get them out, you can put this in. Just screw a line back on. Use that to pop it out. Here's your injector. Here's your pin. You gotta make sure that pin. Yeah. Don't lose it. Okay. Just gotta be gentle with it. Okay. And I can only assume this truck's never been taken apart. I believe it has about 220,000 miles. I can look at, I'll look at the paper and verify it. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around there. <clears throat> that one's in there. So that side's complete. Uh, we got the injectors out. We're gonna go ahead and do the same for this side. So we're gonna get all the fuel lines off, get the injectors out, and then we'll start pulling all the main lines out. Okay. Nope, didn't break none of these free. You feel there's a lot of dirt in them though. Because they're kind of stiff. And in the in my tray, I am sorting them left to right, just for ease of insulation for these lines. These lines, I'm I'm pretty sure they're mostly the same. There's probably uh, two or three different lines on this truck, but I don't uh, I don't want to have to fight it when I go to put it back together. So I just sort it left to right and make it a little bit easier to put back together. Second, I'm gonna pull this line off so it makes it easier to get to those. We gotta take it off anyway. So let's get this oil pressure switch wiring out of the way. There's that. Well, all right. This camera's a little weird today. Those are all set up here. Take that off. Try to keep it organized ish. There's one fuel pipe out of the way. I'm gonna take this one off too. Get 10. I'm gonna take it all the way out. Just loosen it up to where we slip the line out. So we don't lose it because there's like a sleeve in there and stuff. So we'll take that one out. And then now we can get to our lines. A lot easier. Okay. 
better tempered? Uh, I think in my, it's in the bottom of my toolbox on the left. Okay. Say where my battery, it's where my batteries are, it's a yellow case. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're gonna pull these uh, little clippies out. And we're gonna put them in our little tray. So I don't lose them. I have spares. I really prefer not to use them. There's that. Mm, that one's in there. That one hit the ground. I'm dropping everything today. Didn't drop that one though, look at me. Okay. There's that return line assembly, that one's off. So we got both return lines off, now we're gonna need to do the injectors. So, what we're going to do, get out the ratchet. The nice thing is when you pull the return lines off, they kind of spill some uh, diesel down these holes. I lubricate them. There's so much dirt down those holes. Those are pretty nice. That's the other back ones I get. Uh, this one's a little fun. It's up in the boot. for now leave this line <clears throat> you don't want to pry it on the solenoid so don't pry it up here it'll break the injector <laughs> I've never done it but I know that would happen and you don't want to pry on the line you want to try to be careful with these lines because you don't want to bend it. You know, just make it more difficult for you to put back together. Okay. There's our dowel. That's probably the most tedious part of this job. Is putting the, uh, putting it back together, getting everything clean. Because you obviously don't throw this thing back together. Those injectors covered in dirt, those bolts covered in dirt. You're just asking for problems. If you do that. Now, 
I need to grab a gear wrench, 12 gear wrench to get that last bolt. Then I'm gonna pull it up. Let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna have to crawl in here. Um, unfortunately, the camera cut off. I was able to get number 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 eight injector out, so that side's complete. Parta, we can give it to them. Exactly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll finish pulling the fuel lines out, and then we'll go from there. So we have a cool line. I have fuel lines right here kind of a pain to pull so we'll probably just pull this half off for now we'll pull this out um we'll pull this and then this cool line i like to leave the bolts on the radiator <laughs> not the best idea but it's just what i like to do then we're going to take this line off. Um, I forgot about the line on the CP3. Well, like I said, the turbo and the CP3 are getting replaced, so if dirt gets in or anything, I, I really don't care. It's not a big deal. They both have to go back for cores, so I'll just rebuild them and take the dirt, clean them out, and spray paint them and throw them back together. Oh, that's not one. Come on. Um, and then that hose we're just gonna cut. And everything gets replaced. And we have a Hummer out there we're working on. Or a Humvee, sorry. It's an actual Humvee. Uh-oh. Ready? No. Please not yet. We're just gonna cut this. Like I said, everything's getting replaced, all these rubber lines. Yeah, two more make it 48. Then you won't need the engine, you just drive it on the starter. What's smoking? Nothing. Just hook up the generator to the battery. <laughs> uh oh. I'll get this fuel rail off, and then I think we're going to start pulling this valve cover. I got to make room on my cart for the valve train, though. The rockers and the push rod. Push, push rods. <laughs> It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Just gotta let it all spill on there. Okay. Okay. Let's get the upper valve cover off. Careful, these bolts are extremely soft. So, as I say that, I run the bolt, run my Allen into it, things like that. Are you waiting for it? Motion. That's cool. Okay. Uh. Oh, fuck, yeah. That's 
Six two. Damn, Gina. Lucky. What are they doing? Oh, who's using your trailer? Uh, what's his name? Oh, who's going to use it? You know the problem. Okay. Oof. Just got to be careful with these, like I said. Very soft. These actually aren't that bad. It seem as soft as I remember. You know, put them all in my tray. Don't oh, forget. They're all six two. Starting to have to lay in here. <laughs> I twisted my, my torques a little bit. Oops, sorry. Try to get that one. Just gonna see stripping it. Should be one back here.